Hear ye, hear ye, gather round for another edition of Young Kings Wrestling featuring the JDF Memorial Sovereign Soundboard. As always, you can find us on most platforms streaming your favorite podcast episodes, including Spotify, iTunes, YouTube, Google Podcasts, iHeartRadio, and Amazon Music. If you're listening on iTunes, leave us a review of the five-star kind. Links to all the platforms and the merchandise available only at ykwrestling.com. As always, I am the Thespian TC Fontaine, joined by... Who are we today, sir? Taking it all the way back. It's Rick Backlund. Oh. So, Ari, right, you got to elaborate. What, what was your decision... What was the what, what was the factor into this Bob Backlund tribute nickname today? Because it's just random. It was like why why was Bob Backlund on the brain? Honestly, like I, I was trying to expand it out a little bit because you know I'm doing this every single week, so I didn't want to have too much of like one era. So I, I was like, okay. okay, let me let me let me dig back here. How far back can I go with it? And it's something that's gonna like that's one syllable. I can't have like. Like it was one week I said I want to do Sammy, but that ain't gonna make sense because it's like it's two syllables that gonna make make sense when I say it. So somebody that's got a like somebody that's got a simple name like Bob or whatever. So I'm like, okay, there you go. Okay. You should be the great Reek Bowski. The big <laughs> Reek Bowski. Like Val Venus. Oh man. Reek Venus. I could do that one. Yo, that dude be wilding on social media nowadays. I bet he do. No, I mean he be wilding like on on some MAGA shit. Oh boy. <laughs> I think his Twitter got suspended. It was that bad. Like all he do is talk about MAGA stuff and we that's literally all he talked about. Which is funny to me because you Canadian. Why do you care? Yeah. That's a good question. Yeah. Anyway, welcome to Nuck If You Buckingham Palace. It's been a while. I'm gonna <laughs> let it's been a while since Katie's been on this show, like a week. Yeah, yeah. a whole seven gonna, days. I'm gonna let you do your introductions. Whole seven days. Get your introductions uh, ladies, out the way. Ladies and gentlemen, for the second week in a row, Young Kings Wrestling proudly presents to you the MVP of women's wrestling podcast, the hardest working women. In podcasting today, the sun around which all wrestling podcasts must orbit the heart. I mean, I, don't don't Damn. you have Bruh. don't 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 you have another Bruh. thing you're doing now? Yeah. You write right. Yeah, I write. You fuck the intro up. Yes. Yeah, no, I, I'm sorry. I just it, it just occurred to me because I've seen that she had some like she was writing, the, doing columns stuff like that. It, it's crazy. Anyway, the hardest working women in wrestling podcasts today. The one and not the one B, Ms. Katie Kinsey, baby. Thank you. Thank you so Welcome. much. Welcome. What you sipping on? Some wine? Oh, uh, yeah. It's Blackberry Merlot. Okay. Gonna turn the wrestling wine down. Turn it <laughs> up. Facts. It's Shout out to wrestling it's, wine. It's down. just juice. It's so fucking good. Hey that's man, the, I I, I cop some of that Taylor Port that I've been seeing all over Twitter and stuff. It's good. I'm surprised for for some cheap ass 18 percent wine. <laughs> it's pretty good. I was gonna pour me a glass, but I have a show to run, so I'll wait till I'm done. <laughs> <laughs> Raiders won, by the way. Oh, so yeah, I can just I can just quietly exit stage right on that. Yeah, man, <laughs> Parlay Central. Parlays and crashed out. Oh, I feel you. Crash yeah, I, I try sad. to gamble more responsibly now. Like, 
I don't bet more than the minimum on my parlays because I don't want to spend all my money. I do have a problem with making deposits because my parlays never cash, and I just got to I got to put more money in my account. What's what's the what's the number one eight three three bets off? <laughs> I, I never read it. Oh, I just know that they 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 post it up there and they say if you have a problem, call this number. I never read it because I don't feel like I have a problem. But it's crazy. Like they gambling. promote gambling, but then they also promote if you need help with gambling. Yeah, which is like if you got to promote a hotline for people to call when they need help with their addiction. Why are we advertising? I don't know, man. It's crazy. Okay. It's like cigarettes. It's like the new cigarettes. Yep. Anyway, let's move on. Happy Thanksgiving to all y'all who celebrated. You know, it's all about eating food. I'm done. I'm I'm over. I think I'm officially over leftovers. I've been eating leftovers for for the past couple of days, mm-hmm. and it hit me. It was like I was eating leftovers for lunch earlier today, and I'm like, damn, this is my third straight day. Fourth straight day eating this food. Third straight day eating leftovers. I'm kind of over it. Yeah. How was y'all Thanksgiving? It was chill. It was real, real, real light. I didn't really have much leftovers, honestly. Like, I think maybe had the, the one day after. Yeah. I don't like to let that linger no more. Like, it's like, right, listen, we, we having it for the day, and we, we keep it pushing. You know what I'm saying? We don't get that crazy about it. Yeah, some of, some of this might get frozen until Christmas. I ain't going to lie to you. <laughs> like, that. that's 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 the move anyway. Like, we're going to eat again. Right. Yeah. Because, you know, we got... I got beans, greens, potatoes, tomatoes, lamb, rams, hogs, dogs, chicken, turkeys, rabbits. You name it! Turned up. <laughs> ah, sir. I love Thanksgiving. That's my favorite holiday. You get to eat and watch football. Like, what's, what's better than that? Like, all day long, watching football, man. What's better is if them damn parlays would have hit. That, that, that would have been better. Yeah, one of my parlays hit on, on Thanksgiving. I want, I want a little something, something. It was just more money to gamble with. There you go. <laughs> more gambling talk here. Uh, but we watched wrestling all week long. Uh, what wrestling have you guys watched this past week? Load up the old cock a doodle do. I did. I did. Um, what you check out? First, last night, uh, somebody had posted a video uh, on Dry Day's entrance when uh, I think it was Takeover. Takeover. Philly. Yeah, so I had to go back and watch that. Oh, don't get me started on Takeover Philly. Y'all the, know how I feel about Takeover Philly. The, the lack of Andrade on my TV screen just got me nostalgic. So that just made me say, "Listen, if if he's done over on you know almost exclusively White Town, bring him back and put him anywhere so I can just have him back on my TV and it's better for wherever he lands." Yeah. Um, the other thing today, uh, since that's the next thing on the calendar. Uh, rumble season in about a month some change so i started running those uh the greatest time arguably, of the year arguably the best rumble 2020 that's a, that's always a watch uh 08 and 2017 you like 2017 <sighs> i i'd like it a little bit a little bit more than i did at the time because i felt like they was kind of doing too much with the whole like legends run at the end yeah. But it's like, realistically, it's not as bad as like we all thought in the beginning. I think the thing was, it's like we all anticipated a bad number 30 and they gave out the worst they could <laughs> considering the time. Right. But I mean, look, it wasn't a bad rumble. It really wasn't. It didn't need to. I don't think we needed Randy Orton to win it. Yeah. Like that was kind of just like, a, okay, we don't want y'all to be mad and write out another rumble. So. Let's let Randy win here. Like there were better options, way better options. Yeah, like Chris, Jericho. Yeah. Um, in twenty seventeen, in twenty seventeen, you know they gave it to him. I don't know. Only because honestly, of that, that I was team. I was pining for the Miz at that time too. I wanted I wanted the Miz to win something like. After 2016, when he went off on Daniel Bryan, that's true. I wanted him yeah. to win everything, and I was—I remember—I was upset he didn't win nothing. 
That's but true. AJ Styles, John Cena, the best match on that card. Oh, yeah. Far. No question. By far. Uh, what did I watch this past week? I went on a binge watch of Survivor Series. Because remember last year, I was saying I had to watch 05 and like 04. So I watched all of them. I watched 2002 through 2005. And uh, I got one little tidbit to take away from each of those. Uh, one, Paul Heyman's hairline. I watched 02. Remember, Paul Heyman was uh, accompanied Brock Lesnar in his match, but turned on Brock versus the Big Show, cost him the title. In the midst of that, his hat fell off, and you can see his hairline was at a particular part. Uh, 03, he was, I think he was back with Brock Lesnar, if I remember correctly. And uh, his hairline was back a little further. 04, he was with Heidenreich. For some reason. Yeah, we were. Forgot that Heidenreich was a Paul Heyman guy, one of the many failed Paul Heyman guys of yeah. uh, of the time. But uh, Paul Heyman's hairline was back even further in 04. So, God damn. Yeah. So just his hairline just gradually went back every November. And it's, it's something that's noticeable. When I, I forgot to mention, I watched 2001 as well. And uh, he was on 01. But I think he had his hat on the entire time, so. I'm sure I mean, his hairline was. Do we even call it a hairline? To, to be honest, like it is a cul-de-sac. Like, because <laughs> that 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 joint, it always kind of looked like it was holding on for dear life. So it I was. Mean, you remember he had the little little mini ponytail, right? Was, right. Like, bro, I was so happy he cut that shit off. Yeah, that that was just. It didn't fit. It never fit. Do he still got the hair on the sides? I don't really know this yeah, no more. He do. He do? Yeah. Damn. Come on, Paul. <laughs> it's been like 20 years, bro. I, I don't I, I guess I guess it's his signature at this point. Yeah. But, I mean the George Jefferson. Yeah. He got the he got the classic Jewish banker look on. I can't yeah. I can't be mad at him if he, he knows what he's doing. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's probably what he's doing anyway, knowing Paul Heyman. Yeah. Uh, 2003 Survivor Series, Stone Cold Steve Austin could not act at this time. Uh, no. <laughs> you all remember what happened. Uh, it was it was Stone Cold's team versus Eric Bischoff's team. And if Stone Cold's team lost, he would have to give up his uh, general manager powers and, uh, and, and retire. And then Stone yep. Cold's team lost, and Stone Cold stayed out there for like 10, 10 to 12 minutes looking sad and about to cry and it cut a promo and just wasn't very believable. He came back like a month later. Um, 2004, for some reason, uh, Maven and Snitsky main evented a big four pay-per-view. Yeah, they was on the team. Yeah, Maven was on on the team with uh, Chris Jericho, Randy Orton, and Redacted. Yeah. Because I guess Shawn Michaels was hurt. So they had Maven take his spots for some reason. I told you, they, they, I said this before, they, they tried with Maven. They tried with Maven. I, I don't know how they tried, but they tried. That's the thing. Uh, y'all say Vince doesn't give people a shot or he gives up on people. He does try. Yeah. Or at least he did. He doesn't, he doesn't try anything anymore if he doesn't have the job anymore. But when he did, <laughs> he did try. Yeah, a lot of folks just... The cream rises to the top, and Maven yes, sir. just did not rise. They tried several times, man. just didn't, didn't yeah. do it. Uh, he had a title shot. He did. He did. <laughs> he did. Uh, and then 2005, uh, Undertaker came back in the main event. Y'all remember mm-hmm. that one? Uh, mm-hmm. Team SmackDown versus Team Raw. Can y'all hear my Alexa? Yeah, I heard something. Briefly. Yeah, never mind. D- disregard that if you heard it. But uh, Undertaker <laughs> came back at the end of this, and and my biggest takeaway from this is when Randy Orton gets the the victory over Shawn Michaels as the sole survivor of his team, and Shawn mm-hmm. Michaels was the sole survivor of his team for the third year in a row. Randy Orton won a Survivor Series match, and then the the SmackDown team or the the SmackDown locker room comes out celebrating Randy Orton. By the SmackDown locker room, it was the lower card folks, which yeah. you got Spanky coming out there, Brian Kendrick. 
Hardy's Hardy's back in WWE too, by the way. Yeah. That's part that on our rumors. Part. That's cool. in my notes. Here. Hold on for that. Uh yeah, Brian Kendrick was out there. Uh William Regal, Paul Burchill was out there. And Undertaker's big <laughs> doom hits. And Randy Orton is the only one that's aware of what's going on. Everybody else is still celebrating. Randy Orton's like, put me the fuck down. And everybody's still celebrating. (laughs) Like, bro, y'all don't hear the Undertaker music coming out? Y'all didn't see the Undertaker die a month ago? Acting clueless. And y'all, zero self-awareness. But yeah, that was was my Survivor Series watch through. It was was pretty cool. I rarely watch Survivor Series... uh, in November, so it was like one of my first times binge watching a Survivor Series. I'm pretty sure Randy has the record for most Soul Survivors. I'm pretty sure. I'm pretty I'm sure. I don't know where I'm we can check to verify sure. that uh, in an easy way without going one by one on Wikipedia. But uh, I'm, I'm pretty, pretty sure there was sure a too. graphic going around on Twitter that had like the it people been. with the most wins. I think Randy is number one with. Three or four? He's definitely got four because all five was his third and then he did it again in 08. Yeah. He might I don't be. remember nothing about 08. <laughs> yeah, because it was trash. <clears throat> that was the one where uh, Jeff was supposed to be in a triple threat, but they, they found him in a hotel, knocked, uh, knocked out or unconscious or some shit. And uh, here's what we're going to do, pal. It was TBD. Bring real life. It was TBD for like the whole afternoon, and then all of a sudden, it's oh yeah. Edge. It was a storyline. I, I think I think it was a little bit of both, because I know they said that and something they put the happened on this to nigga him a month later. That's crazy. Yeah, yeah. They said something happened to him, but they the whole like finding him in the hotel or whatever they found him at was where they stressed it a little bit. But they done it's like good shit, pal. <sighs> yeah, they done ran a lot of stories at his expense that he'd been cool with. I mean, he do it to himself, but I mean, right? Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Shout out to the Survivor Series. We're gonna talk about this year's Survivor Series in a little bit. It was a fun show. Yeah. War games. I can't wait to talk about that, man. But let's talk about what happened. This week in wrestling history, I don't have anything because I didn't feel like doing all that. But I do have some birthdays this past week. Uh, Today, the British Bulldog, Davey Boy Smith, he's in the Hall of Fame, right? Yep. Would have turned 60 today. It was like in the early 2000s, you had a lot of wrestlers dying from heart attacks before they turned 40. Yeah, man. British Bulldog, uh, Eddie Guerrero. Which is another thing I noticed, uh, 05 Survivor Series 2, by the way. Speaking of Eddie Guerrero. Remember, Eddie Guerrero died a couple weeks before Survivor Series. Yeah. yeah. You can look at a lot of wrestlers on this show and see that they have clearly cycled off whatever HGH or steroids that they were on at the time. A lot of them just look a little blown up. They went a couple weeks without their juice. <laughs> Out of respect, I'm not going to say which wrestlers I noticed. Out of respect. I can think of a couple already. Yeah, it's it's a couple. It's a couple. I wonder who. (laughs) I'll say a couple couple prominent names. But uh, they might be some of y'all's favorites. So we're not going to do that. Yeah, it's it's one of my favorites. So I'm not going to put him on blast, but. Like, it's been a few times in the early 2000s I noticed that this guy cycled off. Oh yeah, <laughs> after after kid one, after, yeah, yeah after he, after he kid number one, mm-hmm. uh, after Eddie Guerrero, after yep. uh, after after that vampire movie. Oh, I just gave yeah. it away who I'm talking about right here. Yeah, now. but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's a big one. Yeah. But anyway, let's get back to these birthdays. Uh, Elias had a birthday this past week. So, wonder if Ezekiel came through to celebrate. Uh, Aaliyah. Shout out to Aaliyah. Which is crazy. Which, like, I didn't think about it. She turned 28. Definitely thought she was a little younger than that. 
And I realized she was in developmental for like eight years. So it made sense. <laughs> yeah. Damn. And then uh, we had some Hall of Fame birthdays this past week, man. Hall of Famers, Ivory had a birthday, Beth Phoenix, mm. and the Bella Twins. Mm. Jam packed. Okay. okay, shout out. I like that. Our parents was getting it in on Valentine's Day. <laughs> Y'all know how that go. Extra busy. <laughs> All right, man. We got the royal address of rumors. I'm gonna pass this over to my co-host. Yes, sir. He's gonna read through. And we're gonna see so, what uh, we got. So keeping with what's current right now, um I don't know why this is happening, but um at this current moment right now, uh if you tune into Fight TV, there's what? a promotion called Big Time Wrestling that's doing mm. the show right now in Raleigh, North Carolina. And the headline of that is that Ricky the Dragon Steamboat is stepping back into the ring one last time. Um, he's supposed to be teaming with FTR to face Jay Lethal, get this, Brock Anderson, and a mystery partner that's going to be managed by Arn Anderson. Yeah, not sure why that's happening. Um, that's I remember hearing to- about this. I thought it was fake. Couple yeah, yeah. It's, it's something that he was talking about for a while. Um, no idea why. He just didn't want to wrestle Flair. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah he, he backed out of that because I think he knew exactly what what that was and didn't want to be no parts of it. Flair literally know. died in the match. We can understand why. Literally. Yeah. Yeah, he was not there. He was not there. Um, This one is slightly wrestling related. So, uh, y'all know what happened to Cain Velasquez, right? Yes. <laughs> so uh, he got uh, he got granted bail, and uh, they gave him permission to do a show. So uh, he's going to be wrestling AAA on uh, Saturday, December third. Uh, they uh, they don't keep that. They keeping that GPS on him so they know where he's at. But uh, they said, "Hey, let the man wrestle." I ain't yeah, mad at he's it. Traveling with a with a law enforcement. Yeah, he got a police escort with him. That's what's up. I'm all the way with that. Only in AAA can you wrestle with an ankle monitor. Yeah. They different out there. I don't know, man. That's Mexico for you, man. So, uh, they say Kane coming out with a police escort made me think when I was a kid again. <laughs> that was funny. Now, uh, so, hope I don't... I, I want to mess a peasant up. Does, does it have anything to do with... Um, a company. Yeah. Uh. Yes. It does okay. have to do with okay. a company. So I'm, yeah. So I'm um, not but it's not that. a wrestling company. Okay. All right. It's more right, so no. a media a media conglomerate. Oh. I got you. Okay. So I'm just gonna throw this one out there really quick. Um. So Mania is supposed to be going to Nashville in 2027. Oh, I saw that. Y'all about to piss me off. <laughs> <laughs> If if a new stadium is built in Nashville, that uh, what's wrong with their current is, stadium? They I guess they wanted to have uh, to be like more of a dome so that they can have a roof on it, to avoid any uh, weather issues and stuff like that. But um, yeah, if that gets done by twenty twenty seven, they will bring WrestleMania out there because of how well SummerSlam did there this year. Uh, they love the town. town I want a them. brand new stadium with a dome and a roof on it. I got a place. Yeah. Yeah. The fuck? Yeah, it's... uh I'm about it's to piss getting... me off. <laughs> Don't go up on a press conference saying, any city wants us to come, just let us know. I talk to the government. We know where you want to go, Mr. Sir. Yeah, that was, a, that was an interesting <laughs> press conference. Yeah, a lot of things to say up there. Um... Speaking of last night, um, you mentioned already that uh, Brian Kendrick, a.k.a. Spanky, uh, back with the company. And uh, he actually worked as the producer. I uh, <laughs> uh, I heard he was the producer. He might not have a job for, again. <laughs> for the worst match on the card, unfortunately. They um, might have set him up for failure with that one. But granted, 
It's not his fault. I, I was gonna say, like, I, I don't think I could pin that on him, given oh, what he we'll, had to work we'll with. We'll talk about it. Yeah, 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 yeah. We will. We will. Uh, Jason Jordan was also a producer on that match as well. So I, I don't. I don't think it was so much on them. But uh, like and I said, they Jason Jordan some... is actually the supervisor of the producers. So yeah. Well, yeah, I thought I saw something that it was both of them. It probably might have been Jason yeah, Jordan yeah. working they with both, you know this new them. hire on the job training type situation. <laughs> so Jason yeah, yeah. Jordan probably take most of the credit for it. We we gonna let Spanky slide this one time. I do yeah, think yeah. it's funny who I I haven't acknowledged him. I probably should have gave him Pheasant of the Week back earlier this year. This dude decided to to leave a very cushiony producer job in NXT as a coach to go wrestle again for AEW, and then they ended up letting him go before he ever got a chance to wrestle because somebody pulled some old shoot footage from 10 years ago. Yeah. Yeah. He had like, you had your, you had a really good ass job with benefits, bro. And now. Yeah. Well, apparently he got the job back. So it's, it's whatever. Yeah. Yeah. Him and <laughs> him and Jason produced that match. And then Jason produced AJ and Finn. Okay. Which I don't okay. know how much work does that need a producer. I was gonna say, <laughs> yeah, like, I don't like... know how much work that really requires with the two of them, but I don't know. I, I probably had to work with them just to get their timing down. That's it, yeah, you know, that, that's, that's, probably you know, something that, that's, real that's small. About it. That's about it. Uh, so this is the big one because uh, it was like it was something that was talked about, we didn't know how deep it was, but uh, now we know uh, Randy had to go uh, lower back fusion surgery recently so uh there's no timetable for him to come back um no actual word on you know how serious still it it, 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 that he was apparently he had been going through a lot of pain the last couple weeks and uh his dumbass stoner friend had been talking about it on tv um but yeah it is it was real deep and we don't know when he's going to be coming back nothing's off the table but I mean, if it's bad enough, we might not see the man back in the ring again. That's that's the long and short of it. So with that being crazy. said, what number he coming out in the rumble? <laughs> <laughs> I, I don't know, man. I, I don't know. He he did have the surgery already. Um, yeah. I know his wife posted it on the so, on social not that long ago. Yeah, the anniversary was a while ago. Yeah. And that was the so, picture she used for the anniversary post. Yeah, yeah. The last match she wrestled was back in May. Um, I think it was like a week after I went, and they had dropped the belts. So I, I don't know if, if if it's one of those scenarios where they like, you know, spicing up the story to 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 get y'all thinking that way. I, I don't know. I I do know that uh, you know. 20 plus years of hitting RKO's is going to do something right. to your back. So, oh, yeah. You know, uh, best wishes to the man. Uh, hope he's going to be all right. Facts. Hope, we don't, hope he haven't seen his last match, but I mean, that was the first wrestler I ever met. Really? Yeah. I didn't want to either, which is a crazy part. <laughs> he was a heel. He was a he was an evolution. I didn't want to see him. Oh, well, then that's 10 makes years sense. old, fam. That's true. Come on. You don't want to see disregard my Alexa if you heard it again. Um, <laughs> you don't want to see as a kid, you say, Oh, we got this meet and greet, but it's this bad guy who's one of the worst bad guys in the company or associated with the worst bad guy in the company. You don't want to see that. Yeah. So I was upset a little bit. And then I met him and I was like, Oh, this dude is nice. <laughs> he's really kind so like then I hear all these I've talked about this before you hear all these reports of him being a dickhead I don't believe it I don't believe it I've never yeah. believed any report about Randy Orton being an asshole because he wasn't <laughs> an asshole to me yeah. <laughs> get well soon uh, yes sir Yeah, absolutely now uh, I'm going to close this out with uh, a funny little story because uh, <laughs> I've never seen this before so, uh, Jimmy Wang Yang did an interview 
with uh, WrestlingNews.com. And uh, he tells a story about how he accidentally got rehired by Vince directly. Uh, this was uh, this was just recently after he had gotten fired. When this like so, around the time WCW closed? No, 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 no. This was or when he was with Tajiri and shit. No, no. This was like oh six. Oh this really? Was, they, it was some. It was some Spirit Squad. I'm, I'm, I'm gonna bring this up. So he was trying. So he was planning a rendezvous with the young lady that night. They were in town, and the show was close by. So he was uh, working on getting them some tickets so that she can come through. And, uh, you know, he's got everything worked out and stuff like that. So he happened to be at the hotel and ran into Vince. And Vince says, well, where the hell you been? My dude was like, you fired me. And Vince was like, oh, what? No way. That's crazy. (laughs) (laughs) So Vince went on to go do his job, but he said, yo, uh, come back to me. I'm going to talk to you. So they brought him in to, uh, I guess, to do like do rehearsals because they the Spirit Squad was doing that spot where they was throwing Sean through a table. Mm-hmm. So they brought him in because Sean was like, you know, like I don't know if I want to do that spot. So they brought Jimmy in and said, "Yo, uh, why don't you jump in there and just kind of take the fall for it so we can see it if he feels better about doing it." Uh, Michael Hayes said he's not under contract to do this spot. He kind of should be under contract. <laughs> So, we need they, to have uh, him under contract. Ooh, do, do, do. Yeah, yeah. So they like, yeah, let's uh, let, let's let's do something up real quick and uh, make sure he gets paid for his work. So he does the spot. Sean goes through, does the show. Everything's cool. Uh, <laughs> he called. They called him back the next night and said, "Yo, you want to come to Raw?" And he was like, "Well, I'm supposed to be getting something tonight, but uh, why not? I guess I'll come to Raw." So he worked raw. Uh, he did like a, a dark match with Charlie Haas. And then they said, hey, you want to come back to SmackDown? He gets to SmackDown and they give him his job back. So uh, they cock blocked my man at OD, but he got his job back. Crazy. I'd rather get my job back. <laughs> That's just me. Yeah. That's just not how I expected that story to go, like at all. I, I didn't either. Shout out Michael Hayes, too. Right. Shout out. Making sure my guys get their paper. That's a real one. Thanks. I mean, we we know we heard the stories about Michael Hayes, but yeah. But we hear a lot of stories of him being a real one. Yeah, Yeah. not not surprising (laughs) stories, but he's he's also had stories of him being a real one too. A lot of the time. He just he's take the good with the bad. He's old school, old school. Yeah, he's old school southern gentleman. Do do do. Yeah. A lot of them don't evolve with the times. Nah. It is what it is. It is what it is, honestly. Yeah, you can't can't trip on you can't change something. Yeah, listen, listen, we've had how many black champions in the last three years? Three years. And he been three of them in the same spot and gorilla through all of it. So I mean, what you gonna do? Probably been producing most of those. We, we've had more uh, mm-hmm. black champions in the last three years than we had ever. Yeah, yeah. So that's kind of fire. At least world champions, WWE champions specifically. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. For y'all that want to only y'all only want to include the world heavyweight title when it comes to talking about black wrestlers, then you, then y'all bring up Booker and y'all bring up Mark. That's the only time. <laughs> Any other time, be like, no, it's different. It don't count. It ain't the same. When we talk about black champions, it's all. Oh. And then but, y'all try to disclude the rock out of it too. Like, he ain't black. Well, and the other reason I have a problem with that is because it's not really their belt. They claimed nah. it and they, they put their stamp on it, but that's WCW's belt. And the Booker belt was around that, seven years, fam. Booker won that five times in WCW ten years, ten already. Years. You know what I'm saying? Like, he did that already. Mark was the only one that never won one, and it's like, okay, so he got that. Cool. All right, because if we count that, if y'all want to count the World Heavyweight title, why don't we count Farouk, Ron Simmons? 
Mm. Y'all don't include him when y'all talking about WWE champions. Exactly. So it's like y'all pick and choose who y'all want to include. And it'd be better if we just include the fact that the WWE championship has only had four black men hold it. Booker T, Mark Henry, Ron Simmons have never held that motherfucking belt. Nope. And that just is what it is. We ain't taking away from the fact that they were world champions. We're not. Because Ron Simmons was the first one. We can't take away from it because he was the first. Booker T had the most at one point in time. Right. Can't take away it, you know, that from Booker T at all. Mm-hmm. And Mark Henry, you know, he had a legendary run too. So, Yeah. Now, I will say Mark Henry should have won the WWE title. We talked about this before with, with John Cena. Listen, Sam and Jack at Mark is goaded. And uh, Cena did not need the whole title Iconic. for that. Yeah. He could have taken that loss and been just fine. If if now that Vince McMahon don't run the company and we get a physical Hall of Fame, and Stephanie McMahon said, we're going to get a physical Hall of Fame somewhere. Stanford, Orlando, wherever. New York, wherever. Get this physical Hall of Fame. That salmon jacket needs to be on display. <laughs> yeah, the actual yeah. one, the the same one. Yeah, y'all got a whole warehouse of of things. I've seen it with top dollar. I've seen yep. it. Y'all got enough stuff to make a physical hole. Y'all over here building an they emporium for the shit. So, all right, you might as well. It's big facts, mm-hmm. big 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 facts. Where we else we at with it, man? Oh, I see. We want to go peasant of the week. Mm-hmm. We can go peasant of the week because we can. Do this peasant of the week and trend. Actually, hold on. I'm gonna switch around my notes a little bit. I'm gonna switch around the agenda a little bit because the peasant of the week we can segue that easily in the Survivor Series. But it's a couple things uh, from this past week. I wanted to get off my chest real quick, and uh, one of these things happened on NXT. We've been seeing these vignettes for weeks. Oh, about somebody breaking into the performance center or whatever the jazz is. And they say, oh, it's the debut of scripts coming up next. It's the debut of scripts. And I'm like, all right, who is this person? It sounded like a black person. So I'm like, okay, it's, it's a brother. I'm expecting a brother. <laughs> what I wasn't expecting was a brother coming out, doing flips in his entrance. And he had locks hanging out his mask. Oh boy. And I'm like, that is no side nigga Reggie. Mm-mm. And I've seen so many tweets saying, is that Reggie? Is that Reggie? I saw so many tweets asking, is that Reggie? That Rob Van Dam grabbed his belongings and left in disgust. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to be here for this shit. Uh, but this dude came out in a mask and the mask was like loose and people using his face as a meme the mask is not going to work Finn. no no. and it's a, a rare occasion in this day and age that Shawn Michaels messes up I do like a chance that my guy uh, real name Sydney is getting a chance to work finally and not like don't you know, have actual matches that's not 24-7. But damn, this mask sucks. <laughs> and what's the gimmick supposed to be? I don't know. I, I don't know, and I don't care. I don't want to see any black wrestlers out here looking like static shock on a Wednesday or Tuesday night. Yeah. Like, we, we can't we can't have this. Like I'm sorry. Like <laughs> I know the guy is talented and you know you want to take challenges with talented people. Yeah. This wasn't a chance to be taken. Please don't do this again. Unless he take Scrap the mask it. off at some point. Yeah. Like we already had a, a superhero ish character. Uh that was a mixed bag. We don't need to do it again. And it's crazy because he kind of doing a similar shtick as uh what's his name? Axiom. Yeah. So right. So, uh, a black luchador. I don't know. Pa- Listen, on, on paper it sounds cool, but that's paper. 
On right. paper, the costume probably looked better too. Probably. I'm sure it did. But uh that's paper, bro. Paper gets yeah. you know, shredded, burned, torn, all the like it, it goes. It does it mm-hmm. doesn't stick like this. Yeah. <laughs> and then uh, another thing, gotta get off my chest, man. To the future. The future. Two time. Worst father of the year. Ray Mysterio. This man got jumped by his estranged son and his girlfriend on Thanksgiving. In his house. In front of his wife. In front of some random kids as well. I don't know who those kids were. Got his ass cooked. Boy. I, uh... I don't say anymore, man. Like, how you can't defend your home against your son? Bro, got his ass cooked. He got his ass cooked. <laughs> he got cooked. Adrian, you didn't go down like that, huh? He got cooked. Like, it, we're not just talking just a home invasion. We're talking about a, a home invasion from your child. On Thanksgiving. <laughs> In front of your wife. <laughs> <laughs> I, like, at one point, like this isn't even about fatherhood. This ain't about parenting. You just as a man, just I can't I can't call you a man no more. And mind you, this, this is the second time that Angie Mysterio has allowed somebody to beat up her family in front of her too. Yeah, that's what I'm At saying. some point, like, you got to step in. Like, I, I, as long as y'all been married, you're not riding for your husband. Like, there Bro. was a woman in there too. I know she's an imposing woman that you might not <laughs> want to take that beat into, but that's your man. <laughs> yeah. That's what he get for having his Christmas tree up before Thanksgiving. <laughs> I mean, that's what he get in general. This, 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 uh, we're not saying that this is not deserved for Ray, but it's like at some point in time, like uh, you seen the, uh, the, that, 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 that documentary, on, uh, I think it was Vice or whatever, the dude that gets jumped in on the set. He got to, you know, he got to take that ass whooping, you know what I'm saying? And then they tell him, like, yo, fight back, fight back. You know what I'm saying? Like, that, that's all I want. Just fight back, bro. Just show some show some. This heart. is the perfect show chance something. for you to fight back. Like, you got to defend your home. He out here looking at your pictures. Yeah. Looking at your wedding pictures. Yeah, being sarcastic man. and condescending over it. Smashing glass on your floor. Like, bro. Like, who going to clean this up? Oh, like it's one thing if, if Ray was just getting cooked in the middle. If he, he was fighting, he got cooked. Okay, cool. That's your karma for being a bad father. But you ain't even trying, bro. You not even trying. You you, you up here crying when he slapped you in the face. No like, mijo. There's no there's no Before fight that. in you whatsoever. Like I remember I remember uh back when Brock came back and he was punking Cena out. And Edge, his greatest rival, came in the ring after he had retired and said, yo, wake up, man. Like, this dude just came up in here and punked you out. Like, okay, you had one loss to Rock. It's a WrestleMania loss, but it happens. You bounce back. This dude is come, trying to come in here and just mess everything up, and you got to fight him. So get How ironic Edge got to be the voice of reason in both of these situations. Right? Yeah, honestly. Right. <laughs> How does oh. that happen? This is crazy. Fight back, dog. Damn. This is crazy. I did laugh when Ray Mysterio like came to the door and he had to go put his mask on. <laughs> he got the mask on. <laughs> so I just imagine like Ray Mysterio got a mask on standby for whenever like Jehovah Witness or somebody it come was by. Like, it was <laughs> like, like, yo, I thought y'all said eight o'clock. Oh, hold up, hold up, hold up. <laughs> Damn, man. Yeah, that was bad. Damn, man. it's tough. They they posted that like I saw this like two minutes after, and I'm like, dog, we not we not doing this, <laughs> not on Thanksgiving, bro. <laughs> on Thanksgiving, yeah. yeah uh, we uh we made sure that that's like a next day air for that delivery for that that award. Oh yeah, I might have to. He 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 already got it. Like y'all already know he got it. It's just we got to have an official ceremony for it. Yeah, but he's won already. He won it months ago. Yeah the uh, the announcement is a formality, truthfully. Because uh, yeah, it's like you know you know who's gonna win a certain award for lifetime achievement. 
before the Grammys. Like, you right. know who's going to get it. It's just we got to get to the ceremony first. <laughs> so, yeah. Anyway, uh, let's get to this peasant of the week, and then we can talk about Survivor Series because, uh, yeah, I had, I had a little had a little issue. I'm packing the edits, guess what? These peasants, you peasants. Peasant of the week for episode 169. Who y'all think is going to be? Seat Geek. Nah, nah. It's not going to be. Oh, no? You thought it was going to be them? I really you know, we can have a double peasant because you look like you got something to say. <laughs> no, nah, cause no, nah, cause when you said it wasn't a wrestling company, I was like, oh yeah, yeah, that's right. Cause they they was lacking. It was lacking. So nah, I, I thought, I, I thought it was be the... paid the bread that they owed us. Okay. All right. Okay. Cool. Cool. They paid the bread. Did you did you get that deposit read? Let me uh let me check. No. <laughs> I, I didn't even look on here. Yep, I did. I okay. Did. So we we have confirmed that uh, our old sponsor has paid us. Yep. Good. And then the I'm I'm taking the stance of uh one Vincent Kennedy McMahon, June 26, two thousand seven. That date sound familiar to y'all? Yeah. <laughs> you will never hear that name mentioned on here again. <laughs> Other than my comments today. Other than our mention. comments today. <laughs> Peasant of the week for episode one sixty nine. Fox Sports, bring that ass here, boy. Bring that ass here, boy. Fox Sports. Oh, oh no. Oh, I understand. No. I used to. I used to work for a. I used to work for another sports network, and uh, which is it's actually crazy to me in hindsight that we that we had a hotline for people to call in and complain about shit that happened on television at this network. It was very, it was beyond me in hindsight. Like, damn, how big of a loser do you got to be to call up a network and complain about something that happened on the television? How big of a loser you got? to be? So we, we would get a lot of people, a lot of times, you know, it was a football game scheduled at two 30, but it was a football game that came on at noon that's going overtime. And then the people tuning in to see the 230 game, like, where is this game at that I want to see? And we have to tell them, like, anything could happen in live sports. So it's always a situation where, you know, a game might go over and the other game got to finish before, the, you know. So I get that. I get that. I understand you're not always going to stay on schedule. But yep. some proper planning would have been, you know, a little nice here. I can't imagine an instance where I spend $2 billion for something and then not allow people to watch it. I'm just saying. It's college football rivalry weekend. I get it. Some some of us had better rivalry weekends than others. <laughs> sorry. Sorry, Reed. I'm not, I'm not here to talk about that. We're here to talk about I am. Fuck sir. Iowa. <laughs> and also my my uh my alma mater UNLV won a rivalry game as well so I had a good rivalry weekend can't say the same about my co-host here but I get it it's, it's college football rivalry weekend happens once a year so we had a rivalry game on. I know you got you know the world cup coverage is priority as well spend a lot of money for that I get it but we could have got, you know, SmackDown on Fox Business or something. We missed the first, like, 15 minutes of SmackDown, bro. Yeah, that's crazy. Yo, $2 billion program. It's a little disrespectful. Like, I understand <laughs> college football and the World Cup bringing more billions. But you still spent $2 billion. Yeah. Y'all could have put this on Fox Soul. Did y'all know that there's a, 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 a BET version of Fox <laughs> called Fox really? Soul? Yes. I did not know that. Where did that come from? It's been a thing for a while. They could have used a boost in viewership. <laughs> you did open the show with Bianca Belair. I'm just saying, had Bianca Belair come out on Fox Soul? This shit. This, this look racist to me. 
This really it is a little racist. Live and Dr. Umar be on Fox a lot. Oh, I'm sure. Look, live and interactive streaming channel dedicated to the African American viewer. What type yeah. of bullshit is that? My little cousin has a show on Fox Soul too. I should check that out. I should know the name of it, but I don't know the name of it by heart. So I'm a, I'm a terrible supportive individual. <laughs> oh man! All I'm saying, y'all should watch Fox Soul anyway. It's, it's black. Support black networks, even though it's a Fox home. So it's not really a black network. I'm digressing from my point here. Instead, <laughs> I mean, we BET were ain't, but, you know. also also. Uh, but uh, instead, we were delayed from viewing SmackDown in several markets. And in some markets, SmackDown didn't air at all. I don't know what that was about. So a lot of folks all over the nation missed the return of the man, Becky Lynch, yeah. who was announced as a fifth partner of Team Bianca Belair at Survivor Series. Yeah. Fox Sports. That's He's getting this peasant of the week, man. Yeah, that's definitely yeah. peasant worthy. And I'm I'm also gonna give a, a a little bit of this. I'm giving about ten percent to DJ Paul as well, because I know yeah. Vince McMahon would have never allowed the return of his biggest women superstar to be missed by a majority of the country. It just wouldn't have happened that way. He would have he would have put something else on, swapped the segments around a little bit, moved around on the booking sheet if he had to. Yeah. A little, little better planning yeah. to be done. Yeah, he yeah. Uh, he does not take kindly to plans being interfered with. You saw what he did with the uh, the Nuggets owner that one week. Oh man, years ago. <laughs> he was about he to go fake to war. Stan Kroenke come out here. <laughs> he, he got on. Listen, he got on ESPN TV. Oh, he, he went in. Just, he went in on bro. Dragged this man. Like he was not on his own airwaves on his show, you know, ESPN, and was just obnoxiously going after this man. And granted, he was on ESPN News, so I, I know not a lot of people saw it. Yeah, because like, imagine if he was on Sports Center on on the main ESPN. Man, that, listen, that would have been a story. That would have made the rounds. It's on YouTube though, so you, can, it so you can't watch it. Go watch it. He went in on breath. Yeah, but no, nah, y'all, y'all got to get peasant. This, this ain't like all these other returns that have happened. Hit Row and Emma. Where the hell Emma been since she returned? Where is Emma been? Uh, she is. I guess they're. I saw her backstage into, a week later. Yeah, they're moving her into this whole thing where she's. So her and Matt Cap are a thing. Mm -hmm. So they're playing that out on TV that she has a crush on him. And they're a thing I, in real life. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, I did not know that. Yeah, because uh, uh, Mad Cat got cooked by a Cross, I think it was last yeah. week. And then she that's came smoke. out there. She came out there afterwards. I They they might get Scarlet in the ring. I think that's something that that, that might have been like what they were going for. Because Cross had Scarlet with her, with him, and Emma just happened to show up. So I, I don't know if that's, that's where they're going with that. I haven't seen Scarlet in the ring yet, so. That's a that's a question. All I'm saying, we we can't have Becky Lynch coming back, and I have to find out about it off Twitter. It's not cool. That's true. Honestly, that's true. Y'all could have put it on Fox News, man. Y'all could have had Tyrus introduce it. All that. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody dropped the ball here. Yes. I suspect it was more than one person. It was it was a lot of people. It was a lot of people in there. Triple H is not blameless. No, no. And I need people to stop acting like he is, bro. I could the, talk all the, day. The the different the difference is that, uh, you know, he makes an effort to, you know, adjust, make some changes, listen to his fan base, and be adaptable. Yeah. It's the only difference. But you need to tighten the ship up a little bit. A little bit. It's a little bit. So Becky Lynch is back, and she is the fifth member of Team Bianca. We were all wrong on that. One of, did one of us say Becky? So, no, no actually. No. I had heard that it was a possibility, but I figured, you know, it, throwing the name around, so 
you know, rumor mill shit. I, I, I didn't throw it out there. I thought maybe it could have been uh, Beth. And I'm thinking I Beth or Candice. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. I know you said Candice. I said Beth. Um, yeah, I, I figured either one of those two would have made the most sense. And then, like, a day later, I saw the story about, you know, Becky potentially being a mystery partner. I'm like, hmm. I, I mean, we'll see. I mean, I know that that's a, that'll be a, a headline, but maybe. Yeah, and a uh, big shout-out to Becky Lynch as well, paying uh, for a whole Thanksgiving dinner for a terminally ill child in the oh, hospital yeah. and his family and the floor team that is taking care of him. Big move. Yeah, man. Big time move. Yeah. Didn't want any credit. And we would have never known if uh if the kid's parents never said anything about it. Right. And he even said that Becky didn't want credit and they had to give her credit anyway. Yeah. Right. Kind hearted people. Can you imagine like a superstar on her level twenty years ago doing it? No, because uh, superstars twenty years ago didn't didn't do all that. Yeah, and there's no you know no offense at our superstar twenty years ago, and they probably did stuff like that. It's just they didn't want credit. Well, I, I can think of a couple, uh, not a lot, but yeah. There, there, there's one here and there that you know, yeah, that they, they. I'm saying they the lifestyles and everything is, is different, you know. Yeah, yeah. They ain't on drugs. Superstar would, you know, back in the day would have spent their money on pills and, and steroids. Say, yeah, having <laughs> they, having they, their guns in the the bags in the locker room and shit like that. We had some Gilbert Arenas's back then. We just didn't know about it. <laughs> it was a couple though. Oh, they just don't talk only, about it. Only a couple people are gonna catch that reference. Yeah, or understand it fully. I could talk about. I was about to get in a, in a tangent about Gilbert Arenas, and this is not the time. <laughs> just say he was cold. Oh, <laughs> I'll just man. say that much. Uh, but here we are uh, for the first time ever on the main stage in the World Wrestling Entertainment Incorporated War Games. War Games. And uh, it was a fun show. Becky Lynch, the fifth member of Team Bianca, and she gets the pinfall in War Games over uh, who she pinned? I forgot. Dakota. Yes. Yeah. Yep, yeah. Dakota. Give it an A, man. Got to give it an A. Now, I did have a this docked down a little bit, a slight pacing issue with War Games, which I think has always been my problem with War Games. It, it's paced a little weird. Mm-hmm. Uh. Mm. Same issue I had in the men's, same issue I've had in NXT. Um, maybe maybe make the intervals intervals a little shorter. Instead of three minutes, make it two minutes, maybe. It'll flow a little better. Uh yeah. EO Shirai, EO Sky, always doing some crazy stuff in these matches. Mm-hmm. You kind of guaranteed a moonsault or some crazy shit from her off of the top of the cage every year. Yeah. Um Becky wins with a Centon off of the cage through a table. And uh, I I was scared, man, because I dislocated my shoulder earlier this year. It's still some things I'm scared of doing now. I dislocated my shoulder five months before Becky Lynch dislocated her shoulder. And she coming back doing shit like that. I got to give her my props. Got to give her my props. Scared. Yeah. Yeah, that's a wild woman. What What'd y'all think about this match, man? What grade will y'all give this? Uh, I got to get this. Uh, I'll, I'll give the same thing. I'll go A. Um, I, it's the same thing I said in my tweet. Like, you know, they, as usual, they they set the bar high as hell for the, the men later on in the evening. And I expected that. I, I do agree about the whole, the, the timing thing, because I feel like, you know the, the the majority of the match is just waiting for everybody to get in there. When they actually, yeah. the match actually starts, you only go about like twelve minutes, maybe. I was gonna say yeah. ten. Yeah. Um, and it's like that's kind of, I don't know, that kind of takes away from it a little bit. So yeah, they definitely could shorten that up a little bit. Um, had a nice mix of everybody, like the the vets, like Rhea and Bianca, 
the newbie. Look, Bailey just added another one to her list of matches that first time ever she was in there and knocks it out the park. So that was solid. But I think she's yeah, I mean, been in all the first time ever matches except Hell in a Cell. Yeah. She yeah. was in the first money in the bank. No. No, she wasn't. Was no, she? she wasn't. No. No. She wasn't. No, she wasn't. Outside of money in the bank. Well, she was in the first ever one on one ladder match. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, first first of that one. First in the first chamber. Chamber, yeah. Yep. First rumble. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Hall yeah, of Fame but, numbers. Yeah, man. Everybody everybody did their thing in this, as expected. So that's that that's A worthy to me. Yeah. Yeah, it's it's definitely an A. Like Everything you guys are saying. Pacing, yeah, that's always been an issue with war games. So if they do it again, maybe just shorten it just a little bit. Um, but three women jumped off a cage. I expect nothing less. And it exceeded my expectations. So that's all I fucking needed. A. A's all around. Good match. So, unfortunately... Some people got to be put in the spot after that and follow that up. And I think uh, your best bet for having somebody follow it up, AJ Styles, Finn Balor. And uh, it was a tough spot on the card. And unfortunately, by them being in that spot on the card, it was it was kind of difficult for me to really hone it in and pay attention. It was still a really good match. But uh, right now, I'm going to give it a B plus. I might watch it back later, see – you know how it's different if I just watch it from there instead of having this big war games match right before it. B plus for me. Um AJ Styles first win on a premium live event since July 2021. Money in the bank last year. What? His first singles win on a premium live event since October 2019. I was gonna say that's the that's the one I saw. I didn't see the other one. Yeah, he had a tag match. It was him and Omos won uh, at Money in the Bank. But his first singles, yeah, been a while. Uh, First singles, three years. Um, But his first canon singles win because Crown Jewel wasn't canon. So his first canon singles win since September 2019 at Clash of Champions. Crazy. crazy but his first canon singles win on the main card since august we 2019 NXT, nxt nxt counts Jesus Christ. <laughs> not a uh, pre-show clash was a pre-show face cedric alexander so if you don't count pre-shows then SummerSlam was uh his last his last uh first I, ricochet the fact that it's been that long period it's just yeah criminal Y'all try to say my man's is buried, but y'all say that that Claudio Castanoli in a good spot. All right. <laughs> how how AJ Styles getting buried when AJ Styles just like I'm fucking 47 years old. I don't need to win all these matches all the time. I can still go and put somebody else over. Well, nobody knew, nobody realized he hadn't won on pay-per-view in three years until somebody pointed it out yesterday. That's true. So AJ Styles Barry, but Claudio he in a good spot because he on TV all the time. Right, it's a Gucci Wally Wally, or is it one mic? This a black girl lost so shorty owe you for ice. <laughs> I, I I will say this. I don't know who who's stupid enough to say that AJ Styles of all people is getting buried, but um I yeah. I we know who's stupid there. enough. Okay, that's true. Um yeah, no, I I, I I couldn't, I couldn't agree with that statement whatsoever. I think AJ doesn't need AJ. Y'all told me Brian Danielson is doing some of the best work of his career, and he lose all the time. What now? Yes. Uh, I'm not going to touch that. Not going to touch. Yeah, not getting sucked into this genjutsu. Yeah, we're not. We're not going to do it. A lot of y'all be tweeting for reactions. Yeah, there's no way you believe that. Like. His wrestling is some of the best. It's but let's let's calm that down. Um, <laughs> I, I'm giving this match a B because I I hate when this happens because uh, the fact that this was here and another the 
the match that's coming up uh, wasn't in this spot so that we could just disregard it completely would have made more sense to me. Because uh, realistically, we, we know that it, this was going to be solid. I mean, AJ on like last minute notice flew across the country and had the best match on the card with the world. Match. So I, I, with time and preparation and a story attached to it, I, you know, I expected it to look better, but again, it's, it's one of the things like, you know, crowd takes place a factor. So I got to watch it again myself, but I'm going to give it a B. I'm going B plus. It, I mean, yeah, they got put in a pretty shitty spot. But the two of them together just make money and make magic. So I was fully invested and all the shenanigans on the outside, but taking the OC and Judgment Day out of the out of the equation after the fact, it made it so much better. Like it was very reminiscent of the last time they had a one on one match. So I give it a B plus. They did what they had to do. Yeah. B plus is all around. And shout out to Michael Cole for educating the uncultured swines out here. Who didn't know uh we it's not oc anymore they used that b word on television which i didn't think they could say bullet on tv uh but i guess they've been saying war for weeks. Counts. <laughs> that is true that is true like we uh we turn in the corner so uh we we just stopped capping about where aj has been for years and where gallows and anderson have been for years and what finn had to do with all that so uh yeah shout out to cole i mean so anderson cole is... out to me the realest personal commentary. Anderson is still the never open weight champion for Japan. Right. So they have to kind of acknowledge something with Japan or yeah. they're did just we ever stupid. Find out, did, did he work that, that, that event? The weekend uh, he it's Googleable. He, I don't think he did, but there is a match set up. I don't know for when though. Probably Wrestle Kingdom. I think Wrestle Kingdom. That makes sense. Yeah. He, uh, Michael Cole, definitely told y'all about the origins of the Bullet Club. Mm-hmm. Took him 30 seconds. So yeah. for the wrestling <laughs> fans who see somebody who they don't know about show up on their TV and they want a little backstory about it and then you niggas just tell them that they can just Google it instead of the commentary team and the promoter doing their job of promoting this unknown individual to an unfamiliar audience, it takes less than 30 seconds. Michael Cole proved that. Literally. Yeah. So, you know who I'm talking about. You know who I'm talking about. We all know. Yeah. No, it does not look like he worked that New Japan show, though. He has not worked New Japan since he came back. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, understandable. Uh, but yeah, next match. Uh, you know, we don't got to spend that much time on this one unless, you know, we got some rants or something. But what else can be said that hasn't already been said? Uh, Ronda Rousey defeated Shotzi to retain the SmackDown Women's Championship. I have no grade for this one because in order for me to give grades out on matches, I have to watch them. <laughs> and I did not watch this match. I literally made a plan before the show. I'm going to spend the time that this match is on doing some chores around the house. <laughs> and I I had some very good time in doing these chores because I finished my chores right, right as the match ended. Wow. So I didn't watch this match. I heard it wasn't good, though. So no. did y'all watch it? Yep. Well, unfortunately. Yes. What the hell I was thinking. See, I, uh, I I knew ahead of time. You know, <laughs> I I don't know what to say. Like I, I couldn't possibly have a rant. I don't know what to say anymore. Like I, I I'm tired of having to say this, and I, not nothing changes because I need that MJF sound bite. Me. <laughs> I honestly and, and everyone seems to agree when I tweeted it. Mid is not even the word anymore. We've gone so far nah. below mid, it's six feet deep. <laughs> yep. Like, I just, this is so, I, and I feel terrible for Shotzi. I really do. Yep. Because she's working her ass off in this. And this is what she got to get subjected to. Because she gets secondhand embarrassment off this because she worked that match. 
Mm-hmm. And at the end of the day, it's like, I, I don't care what your background is. You could be uh, whatever, pro athlete, a fighter, whatever. If you come in here to this world and the presentation is not appealing and you're one dimensional in a sense, you're going to get stale. I don't care how much the machine gets behind you. It just, it doesn't work. And that that's all this is here. Ronda Rousey is a one-dimensional professional wrestler. Like she was a one-dimensional fighter. One-dimensional fighters get cooked, and she got cooked. That's why she's not fighting anymore. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And it's like that's all we've seen here. Not much has changed with her move set, and the presentation went from eh, it's okay, but not really care much to it's trash now. It's literally trash. It's cringe. And I said mm-hmm. it on SmackDown. Shayna is getting secondhand cringe off of this. Because she's partnered up with her. I remember in NXT, Shayna didn't have to say but a couple words every here and there. She had backup with her, but she didn't need it because she was just going to show up, smash you, and leave. Yep. Now she's talking too much. Because Ronda jumping talks people too much. from behind, what's that about? That I have no idea. I, I don't I don't know. And that's something on, on both of Shayna and Ronda. Because why is Shayna and Ronda jumping somebody from behind? That's that's uncharacteristic to both of them. Right. They don't need to do neither of them need to do that. So why? Why are we doing this? It's like you're treating this as hey. if you're not who you are. I don't know no triple H, but this is all about the game. This is what we yeah. were saying. You not, gotta not, be be start not, being honest a little bit. Not not blameless. He's not blameless. I'm 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 not gonna I'm not gonna deny that at all. Cause this is this is not especially and he's been booking again, wrestling shows long enough to where we don't have to be like, oh, we need to give him time. Well, and that, that's what I'm saying too. He was booking Shayna. He so, was booking literally most of his roster he booked. How how did we depart so far from what was working for you with this particular talent? And it's like Rhonda just goes out here and just talks as if like she's on her podcast or something like that or on some show that nobody else she just vents and says whatever she wants to say because it's like she don't care like nobody want to hear that it's not pe- people say you hate ronda so i don't hate anyone in this group it's apathy i don't care for it it's the same thing i have for logan paul he shows up on tv and talks and i don't care i don't react to it and apathy is worse than hate People hated Roman Reigns, but at least they reacted to him. Apathy is just, that don't draw money. It's bad. And she needs to stop getting her little infant child to do makeup on her face because it's, it's looking nasty. Is Ronda even a draw still? No. No, I no. don't think she is. No. I don't think people care to see Ronda Rousey anymore. Like, Ronda, the shine Ronda is peaked, worn off. Ronda peaked in her first run, and truthfully, she shouldn't have come back. Thank you. Yeah, this is this is like this is like when the the Lakers brought Magic Johnson back a few years after he initially retired, and he ended up playing out the rest of the season. This is just Actually, like that. I, I I will take that back with one exception. If Ronda for to bring Ronda back after that first run, we should have done the Brock Lesnar route. Because I think anyone that has respect for wrestling can commend the fact that she wants to work a full schedule. That's good for you. But the fact that what what made Brock Lesnar so appealing when he came back was that he was an attraction. It's like, you're not going to see him every week. When you do see him, it's for a big feud. It's for a big match. You're building it. You're kind of treating it like like UFC. Like, okay, so this is going to be a big money match. We don't do that. That's tough. We put her in front of everyone every week. She has nothing interesting to say. She's talking too much, and you're, you're ruining the appeal. Yeah, let's do better. I on cut it. out there now. Yeah, you did. You did. You did. And he still did. He's hella crazy. <laughs> so yeah, I think that's the perfect time we can we can move on from that match. That match sucked. Apparently, mm-hmm. I didn't see it. So. You don't. It's not even worth your time, TC. It was a waste of fucking time. I'm not going to worry about it. I'm not going to watch it. 
It's a waste of time. I never planned on watching it when it was announced because it's just two people I don't care about. So I'm going to do better things. I'm not going to complain about it or I'm not going to shit on it. I'm not going to watch it to shit on it knowing that I don't want to see them. So I didn't watch it. You feel me? I do. I do. But this next match, though, it was a bang. And, you know, I hate using the word banger. I hate the word banger to describe wrestling matches because wrestling fans ruined it. But this is one of them ones. Austin Theory won the United States Championship another time. Uh, More on that here. But he defeated Seth Rollins and Bobby Lashley in a triple threat. A minus on this match. The match was... It was 15 minutes, but it felt like half of that. All right, it was really well paced. Uh, Seth Rollins has a crazy motor. This dude just energizer bunny, just goes and goes and goes. Uh, the finish, I enjoyed the finish. Um, was it like in the middle of a suplex or something? Reek, are you good, bro? Um, well, he's whatever. Um, I think Seth was going for a Falcon Arrow. Oh, okay, yeah, Falcon Arrow. Bobby Lashley hits the spear, and then Theory falls on top of Seth, and that's the end of it. It protects Lashley, protects Seth. Austin Theory wins it back. We need to stop hot potato in these championships, though. Yeah. U.S. title, hot potato. Tag titles, women's tag titles, hot potato. So, Mr. H, we got to figure out what you're going to do. Saying you didn't have potato belts in NXT, we had to do this to Mr. Theory. A minus, though, no complaints from me. I enjoyed the match, it was fun. It was my favorite match on the card at that point. Okay, we good, Reed? I don't uh, think we good. I'm gonna say A. Oh, okay. Never mind. It, uh, it was close to being my match of the night. I initially had it for the night. Yo, your video and your audio is Hold not on. in sync what? at all <laughs> whatsoever. Oh my! Oh my God! All right, so y'all, y'all have my grade as an A. Yeah, we yes. your grade is an A. Leave and come back, well, Katie. You get your grade out. There. Okay, okay. Um I I'll give it I'll give it a solid A. Uh it I definitely did not expect Theory to win. So that kind of like shocked me a little bit. I was a little surprised, I will say. Um but yeah, like you said, it, a hell of a match. Like I have said in the past I never hated Austin Theory in ring. It's just his character I was not a fan of. Like, I will never shit on someone in the ring who is very talented. Like, it's the same thing with Charlotte. I didn't hate Charlotte's in-ring work. I just hated the fact that she always had a title. Yeah. It's the same thing with Theory. Like, his character was eh. But this theory is fantastic. Big Bob doing Big Bob things. Seth freaking Rollins being, like, the stomp off of Theory to Lashley. Crazy. I really thought it was going to be, like, Mania, where Theory's gonna pop him up, and then he was gonna stomp Lashley. But regardless, it was fantastic. So I, I mean, yeah, they did what they had to do in the very short amount of time they had. So, yeah. And the match went, like I said, like almost fifteen minutes, but it definitely felt like it was like eight. Yeah, it just felt it like felt it was very fun. fast. And that Seth Rollins having that motor. That guy. Mm-hmm. We back in sync, Reed? We should be. Nope. <laughs> nope. No, no, it's not. It's <laughs> in and out, in and out. Oh, that's lovely. That's lovely. That's tough. Soon as start talking about Ronda. Yeah, I got my grade. Yeah, grade. We did get you great. We did get you great. Leave and come back. <laughs> All right. A few moments later. I'm about to. I'm about to. Yeah, hold on. He hella, he hella all sync. That's crazy. Hella. 
Hold on. It's crazy. See, it's a good thing I am kind of here. Yeah. I would have just had to, you know, sit here with the awkward face. And this is why we never go live. <laughs> Listen, uh, going live is a time. It's, it's always something recently with me going live. Yeah, I will probably never go live. Unless, you know, Rick gets some better internet out here. It's almost Christmas. Do we have to get him better internet for Christmas? Yeah, really. Camera, too. Camera, new internet. We'll come up. Maybe. Yeah, man. Donate to the... Donate? What? <laughs> Donate? <laughs> to the United... Negro Reek Fund. Yeah, that's what. <laughs> we back. We live. I think I'm good. We do. Turn up. Turn up. Just in time for the main event. Okay. We stalled for you. See, we that's how we do right here. Young hey. King's Wrestling. Oh, damn. Damn. Again. <laughs> oh. Yeah, let's let's do this before see what, so we started what? talking about Ronda. It was it was it was a wrap. It was game over. I can't I can't I can't go um, in on nobody apparently. That's, that's <laughs> every time it's literally every time Reek started, you know, talking his shit. Yeah. Like literally every time. It's about those in power. <laughs> so we, we shall move on. Uh, in the main event, uh, we had uh, the Bloodline taking on the Lads and Kevin Owens in War Games. War Games. And uh, before the match, Roman met with uh, Jay Uso, and Jay Uso was like, "Hey, Us, this dude last night, you know, I overheard him talking to Kevin Owens, telling him, you know, Kevin Owens saying this and that." And then Roman's like, I right, bet I'm gonna sit with Sammy. We're gonna see what's up. And he's, he met with Sammy. And Sammy told him straight up, was like, Yeah, this happened. Kevin Owens was trying to get me to turn on y'all. You know, I I listened to what he had to say and I told him to leave. And that's what happened. And Roman was like, I right, bet. And why'd you lie to Jay? And he said, All right, look, man, I ain't want Jay to get distracted. He had a big match coming up. I figured, you know, if I would have told him what happened, he wouldn't have saw it clearly. So I, you know, I wanted him to keep his mind off. And that's what happened. So uh, we get to the match. And Jimmy Uso starts it off versus Butch. And of course, uh, you know, the lads had the advantage in the war games. And uh, Ridge Holland comes out there after. And Jay, Jay Uso needs some help because it's two on one. And Jimmy Uso said, I'm going to help my brother Uso day one ish. Roman said, nah, son. Let Sammy go out. So we get a, a test of Sammy's loyalty early on. And uh, it worked out for everybody involved because in the end, Sammy Zayn did what needed to be done. And he solidifies himself as part of the bloodline, officially turns on Kevin Owens. I mean, job had to be done. Is it really turning on Kevin Owens? Like, we at work, fam. <laughs> Like you understand, you you've prioritized work over your friendship with me several times. Why should we feel bad about you? Right? <laughs> am I am I wrong or am I preaching right now? I don't, You're right. I don't know how you can consider anything Sammy does a, a turning on Kevin. His first night, he showed up and beat the hell out of his best friend after he won a title. Thanks. Yep. All I'm saying, Kevin Owens. He's done Sami Zayn wrong several times in the past, notably Kevin Owens' first night at the job. Uh, he also got in other folks' business unprovoked. Like, you really had no reason to be here. I think your mic's unplugged. Uh, he had no reason to be here. So, what are you doing? And you also get no points for Dirty Mac. You tried to Dirty Mac hard on Sami Zayn on Friday night. I can't feel bad for him. I cannot feel bad for him. Uh, but Sami Zayn, he also got the approval from Jay Uso. After like six months, 
It's been like six months, and Jay <laughs> Uso's just not messing with him. So now that again, was a good moment. It was. I, I was I was really happy for everybody involved, and uh it made me want to download this sound. We are family. America <laughs> is the code. <laughs> And Sami Zayn followed the code to a T. A plus 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 plus, because Roman Reigns was involved. Yeah. Yeah. No, nah, the the storytelling alone elevated this to an A plus easily. Um, the whole thing, like, it, they went the complete opposite of what I thought was going to happen. Like, I'm thinking that we walking Sami to the gallows. Yeah, well, well, he was going to say, well, he thought Sammy Zane was about to be a main man. Somehow. Oh, he back here. Yes. Never mind, he not back. Are you back? I'm good. Oh, you good now? Okay. <laughs> I thought I was. That was almost over, guys. <laughs> nope. Nope, I'm not. A plus? Yes. Okay. <laughs> that was very delayed. Uh, Katie, go a ahead. Plus. Uh, yeah, A plus. Uh, this you've you've gone on record multiple times. CC and saying wrestling is a soap opera, correct? Yes. This was the definition of a soap opera. This was like a soap opera that I know about. This was everything combined into one. It's the little things throughout, like focusing on Jay's hand, which we previously thought was broken in the whole match, which now I'm seeing reports that it actually is broken. I don't trust anything until I see it from the people themselves. Um, but, like, the catalyst was, like, the last five minutes of the match. Uh, Sammy officially, like, quote-unquote turning on Kevin with a low blow, no less. And then Haluva kick and lets Jay get the pin. Yeah, I was not expecting this to go as smoothly for the bloodline at all. I really thought we were going to see some shit go down. Nobody turned in either match. Either Warriors match, and yeah. I really did expect it from at least one person from each match, and it didn't happen. But it, <laughs> what a way to close out the show. A+. plus. What Roman Reigns going to do? I don't know. I wonder what he got to say. You gonna show up to work Friday, Roman? Maybe. Oh, now we getting a second reek. <laughs> Two reeks. Life is crazy out here. We we getting extra additions into our podcast towards the end of it. <laughs> no, I'm, I'm I'm going I'm going portable because I'm sick of this. It's tough. <laughs> this is fantastic. So I'm, I'm just, just that's just how I'm just gonna, just gonna make sure you get out of this one then. Yeah, yeah, kick that. Got two reeks out here. <laughs> Cool. Now we got one reek. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I did give this an A plus. Just so we click. Um uh, yeah, no. Uh I, I think Katie was saying what I what I was getting ready to say. Uh best wrestling is uh a teleno telenovela or a soap opera, and that's all this was. Uh all, all this like what we were supposed to, what we thought we were gonna see, or what I thought we were gonna see. It uh they geared completely to the left off of that. And uh I don't know I don't know why Kevin would be surprised about this. I mean, truthfully, uh Sammy's done more for you than you done for him in any sense. Like, you know, he definitely saved you from a Sam McMahon kamikaze attack a couple years ago, mm -hmm. uh, off the top of the cell. So I mean the man's been having your back even though you've been stabbing him in it. So uh it was just his turn to do it. And factual, in, factual. in this moment, yeah, and it makes it better because when they eventually do 
kick him to the curb. Vice it's gonna be the same problem. It's gonna hurt gonna break some people's heart. It's gonna break some people's heart. Agreed. Oh, yeah. Nothing. Oh none, none, none at all. Nope. <laughs> none re none no. Uh <laughs> yeah. No. Nah. No, nah, your internet was messing up a little bit again, but it's all good. On here? Yeah. Yes. No, no I'm using data. Like this is not <laughs> Wi Fi no more. <laughs> My boy on that three G. Disrespectful. It says five. Hey, you know that's cap. You like the Mario five G. I mean, I'll be, I'll be paying for five G. So all I right, mean, like, all right, yeah, be tripping. So <laughs> it's all bad. We at the end of the show anyway. The Survivor Series. It was a fun, fun little moment. War Games was cool. We might be seeing it again. Uh, officially, there is no more Hell in a Cell premium live event. Yep, that was confirmed as well. Yes, and yep. uh, we might get a show in Puerto Rico at some point as well. It's about time. And shout out to those wrestling girls. Yes. Yeah, that was dope. Press conference. So maybe one day if WWE decides to do another show here in Las Vegas ever. Because mind you, they're not on the calendar for, you know, at least until after WrestleMania. So if they ever decide to do it, maybe Young Kings Wrestling can get in there and ask a couple questions. Facts. We need some more color in that room. We do. And I met Byron before, so, so we already cool. So I'm going to get a question. Now, Byron cool peoples. Yeah. I I don't know about his food choices, but uh, he cool dude up. Yeah. Elaborate. I didn't tell you this story? No. Nah. So, yeah, I, so I met him. I met him after a SmackDown. Armor. I met him after a SmackDown up here. And, um, we uh, I was I went to Sheets after the show, and I just happened to run into him when I was there. And my dude told me that he was looking for pickled eggs, and I said I don't know what that is. Uh, we're both black men. I don't think you're being serious. I think you're just messing with me right now. So, uh, what are you really looking for? He said I'm looking for pickled eggs. I'm like, okay, all right. And then he found them. He was like, these are really good. They're really amazing. I'm like. I'm not going to judge you, but uh, I'm judging you. And yeah, I, I, I really, we actually, we took a picture and he was holding them up in the picture. It was, it, it was funny, but uh, again, judging the man food choices, but he a cool dude. So, you know. I'm going to stall him out on that because ain't he from the South? Pretty sure. That's what they do in the South. They eat stuff like that. Pickle, I know, pig, I know you. They, like, I'm about to say, like, <laughs> I know they got crazy choices. That one I never heard of before, though. So I was just like, I was a little confused. Shout out to Byron, man. What? Interesting. Yeah. By, Byron What's Saxon that? eats pickled eggs. It's fun to know. Yes, sir. Look at socials, Katie. Yes. Yeah, man. <laughs> uh, you can follow me on Twitter at Gatorazm13. Link to about to get all things she leads showcase, twitch.tv slash she showcase, typically Thursday, 6 p.m. Eastern ish. Uh, YouTube.com slash she leads showcase. Watch videos because the way we're entertaining. Anchor, Spotify, Google Podcasts, Apple Podcasts if you'd like to listen. She leads showcase is the brand and the weekly show. A uh, new episode of Inside the Mind of, which is the interview series I do with RN, comes out tomorrow. I already have it uploaded and ready to go. 7 a.m., like I always do. Uh, in the crowd made its return with just from Getcho and his cousin Rob. Savannah's new shows are out. Uh, I'm I'm writing things now that might be on floor slap for sports. Tim messaged me back while we were on the show, so I'll respond to him in a minute. Uh, I'm doing a lot of stuff. So like the Sheely conglomerate that's going to turn into like a whole uh, media outlet. In what two years, maybe? Uh, See, don't forget know, about us. Oh, I would never. You know, I, I fully expect you to be out here on your wrestling wind down, on your those wrestling girls, on your on your on your public enemies. Hey, I 
I just love doing this and the amount of people I can get to interact with. Like, Queen PR, that's my girl. I love her to pieces. I would love to do more with her and Krista B. So, I just, we just gotta find time to do all this stuff. I'm with it, man. Plug your socials, Real talk. Real talk. Uh, y'all can find me at Recap24 on Instagram and on Twitter. Hey, go check out the Havoc Hour or talk sports and entertainment on all platforms. We find Young Kings Wrestling, Spotify, Anchor, Google Podcasts, and the video version up on YouTube. And go check out the Instagram page underscore the Havoc Hour underscore. And I am the Thespian TC Fontaine. You can follow my Instagrams, tc.fontaine, F O Y photo 702. It is the same. It's the same. It might change this week. I might actually do it this week. I, I have not actually gone through and brainstorm what I'm going to change it to yet. So, maybe this week. But as for now, FOI Photo 702. I have some photos in there. You want to take a look at my art, my imagery. Took a... My most recent post was uh, the Vegas Aces Championship Parade. Trying to get us some games next year. Do all that good jazz. I'm going to get back to some wrestling shows and shoot those. It's been a while. So I'm trying to, trying to make use of my very expensive camera. And I'm still paying for it, probably. Because mm-hmm. black people buy things on credit. You know, and it takes a while to pay those things off. I feel like there's a certain individual who might know something about cameras. That uh, probably could have got you to bypass a little, little bit of those issues. He's not around though these days. Yeah, haven't haven't seen that person in a while. Yeah, except when yeah. when that person sees Rob Van Dam in their notifications on Instagram, and they gotta <laughs> tell us about it. Only time to show his face around. Yeah, here. yeah. Woo, woo, woo. <laughs> no. Yeah, but uh, yeah, follow my Instagrams. If you want to follow me on Twitter, you can as well. Follow Young Kings Wrestling everywhere at YK Wrestling, ykwrestling.com for your merch like Reek is wearing. Show that merch off, my, my, my young brother. Black Lives Matter tank tops and hoodies. It's hoodie season. Go get you a hoodie. Might be time to wear those Wolfpack hoodies. Might be time. Supply and demand. Yeah. Might be might be time. But I want to close out with one thing here. And it's very simple. It's very, very simple. And I think it's a word to the wise. Everybody should live by this mantra. Paul Hogan, we coming for you, nigga. We gone. <laughs> <laughs>